Hello and welcome to the Emperor's New Podcast, where we normally talk about every corner of the Emperor's New Groove universe, but today we are expanding beyond into the greater Disneyverse and talking about Once Upon a Studio. Today I am joined by Shelby Sessler. Hello. Jacob Martin. Hello, everybody. And our two very special guests who have animated on some of your favorite characters and also did animation in the short. Please welcome Tony Bancroft and Nick Ranieri. Hi, guys. Hey. So this was a lot of fun. Um, what was it like, even for, you know, just these quick shots, going back to these characters? Well, I'll start by just saying, yeah, we just finished watching it. Um, and for me, this is the second time I saw it. So, uh, you know, a little less surprising for me. But Nick, uh, this was your first time, right? Yeah, yeah. I I, I mean, I saw a rough um, a storyboard of it. Um, uh, uh, uh animation reel um but uh um sorry an animatic yeah that's fine yeah and um uh but i haven't seen a final uh this was the first time i saw a final of it and um and uh, yeah I, there's a sh certain things that um i was different from the animatic and uh, uh they made some uh good uh choices and good fixes and things like that that made it flow a lot nicer and uh it was a really uh, nicely uh, put together, nicely produced um, film. Yeah. What did you guys think overall? I um, thought it was adorable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. it's very cute. It's very much a kind of thing of a, like, how many characters do you notice and recognize and how many can you point out, like, instantly type of thing? And it also... I mean, I know it's a short, but 10 minutes is pretty long for a short, but it went by very quickly. <laughs> yeah, it did not feel like 10 minutes for sure. No, yeah. no. Yeah. And the credits were super fast, too. I I, I barely saw my name pop out. I yeah. Know if you saw Nick, I it, didn't see my name at all. <laughs> yeah. It was just in that block of animators. And yeah, luckily, I, I thought to yeah, look those, they, they should really slow down the animators just on every movie because there's so many. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. I, I thought they were going, they told me that they were going to have a special credit for all the, the people that were coming back to, uh, to do their characters. Yeah. And I they guess they not. decided against it at the end. Yeah. Um, I think it's because that, well, they did highlight the voice credits quite a bit. I mean, like they had them kind of singled out. They were all on a card, but they had it more singled out based on the voice that they gave. I did see James Woods. Yeah. Thing. I yeah, got yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. I, I saw that one. I saw, I saw yeah, Bobby I Driscoll on the names. I yeah. was checking to see what archival voices they had versus the current. Cusco was definitely archival. I'm pretty. Oh sure. yeah, yeah. What? He only had like the oh. one line, so yeah. He just said no touchy, and it sounded exactly the same as it sounds in the movie. So I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I th they told told me that only they they only got James Wood back. Uh, James Woods back to do his line, and that was it. They didn't mention um, David Spade at all. Yeah. So, yeah. Boy. I don't know. I don't know if they even like. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they. I think they did a good yeah. job. The directors did a good job, and the um, storyboard artists and and the gags that were presented were very character driven. Yeah. I particularly yeah. like the the frozen gag when they're like. Uh, well, I hope not all the villains are coming back, and and, and then she fr uh, freezes whatever that character's and name is. Hans, yeah. Hans, and some Hans, yeah. some people. That was... Go ahead. Go, ahead. Go on, Micah. Oh, I was gonna say I've heard some people because of the way he's posed and his name is Hans that they think that's supposed to be a Star Wars reference. <laughs> that's pretty. Good. I can see I that. I can Star see Wars that reference. actually. <laughs> yeah, because he's frozen and he has his hands up like this. I mean, you can't see oh, it, but you know good. what? I mean. Yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah. Joke. He's very much doing the frozen and carbonite that, pose. That's like I think one of the only references to something Disney owns that isn't by this particular studio in the short. Yeah, that isn't animation. Yeah, no, but but a lot of people were like, "Oh, it's going to be another everything Disney owns." It's like, no, it's a stu once upon a studio. It's specifically going to be stuff that was animated yeah. by, it, by this studio. Yeah. Because it wasn't, it, this was not a Pixar Disney studio. This was specifically Disney Studios works. Yeah. Yep. 
Well, I guess the big question for you guys is, uh, I'm interested to hear what you guys say. What uh, was there characters that you were surprised to see in there, and and some that you were surprised that you didn't see? I was expecting to see some of the television animation stuff. Like I was expecting somewhere like Phineas and Ferb to be oh, in there, yeah, that's a or even studio. more modern Molly and Scratch. But yeah, that's a I do think studio. that that's a different studio. Yeah, they should, so that's they not need, the, the movie yeah, it is. Yeah. I, the animation and in my opinion, they Disney TVA should do their own. Uh, yeah, I think please. all the branches of Disney should do this. All the branches, yeah. parks, TV animation, <laughs> live action, all of them should do something like this. That'd be fantastic. Because, <laughs> you know, there's tons of characters from DTVA, just like there are from Disney that you like never see anymore that I'm sure would yeah. be great. Yeah. To see just a quick, even for a quick second in a thing. I think, um, weren't we talking about something with that the- recently? We were talking about that with um the most recent villain short that they did with um with darcy from amphibia we yeah. saw like mosin wrath on the list and yeah. like mega duck yeah yeah so i think that's basically what they're uh, trying to do was rare fox in there anywhere <laughs> i don't think Rare-fox. so i know a lot I, of I was i wasn't something <laughs> tells me i wouldn't be surprised if he was but i also <laughs> wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't yeah. <laughs> oh, oh I, i'd be surprised if he was <laughs> yeah also no dark no uh, black cauldron characters what? oh yeah, Ger- yeah. Was there. there was Gergi oh, was there then i think the main ones because i think what i heard yeah, they was, were all there. was basil in there i didn't see that did you? Yeah, there was very a, small did, did. so you yeah he was very small and, he's and in the they, shot at the end because i've looked at the still picture of it because i got spoiled for it um, yeah, his back is to the camera though he's That's very crazy. tiny well um, the fact that charlotte's in there blows my mind so yeah. i i can't believe they actually put her in there i, I remember when they were like announced when they announced this they said like the main character at least the main characters from all the animated canon films were going to be in it so and i so know Br- that- bear bear fox and and bear rabbit and bear rabbit obviously yeah yeah i don't was that <laughs> made at i guess it must have been made at Disney, because I don't know if they had much else back then. Um, yeah, in 1946, I mean, I yeah. Th- I think, even though it, I know it wasn't officially part of the anime canon, I would have loved to have seen uh, Roger Rabbit characters. Oh. Yeah! Yeah, I was yeah. thinking about that. I'm like, huh, I'm surprised Jessica or Roger never showed up anywhere. Though that might, I don't know what, like, I know Spielberg owns, like, some percentage. Yeah, yeah of, that's true. Yeah. That's true. They would have to have um, um, Spielberg, as far as I know, Amblin owns, this is back then, Amblin owns uh, Baby Herman and Jessica, and Disney owned uh, Roger. They and that's, that's, and that's how you get Roger Rabbit showing up in, like, Rescue Rangers and stuff. Yeah, yeah or in the parks. Yeah. Well, Jessica and Baby Herman are in one ride in the parks. Yes, yes, but I mean, like as a walk around character yeah. and stuff. Baby Herman yeah. would be would be terrifying. I mean, Jessica. They, oh my gosh! Please. Oh no! <laughs> have you seen the <laughs> Jessica Rabbit feel? walk around character they used to have? She's terrifying. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. Who's that? Who greenlit that? She's like that a, a hybrid between a costume character and a face character. Like she's just a person yeah. in a mask. Where are the eye holes? Well, and I'll say that like <laughs> but her proportions are all cosplay just has normal. come so far that. <laughs> Well, like the thing is, the cosplay community has come up with ways to make those proportions work for for people in costume. So I think that yeah. if they had her walk around now, they would be able to do something that's not uh, terrifying. I also think that just t- they need to figure out a way to do two and a half, two and a half D, but for meet and greets, and that's how they need to do yes. the other rabbit characters. Yeah. Or for those who are Kedikerous fans, two point five D. Yeah. Because <laughs> what they I did know- was. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I know that you guys told us before we watched the short what you animated. Would you guys be able to tell us for posterity, since they didn't credit you with your specific characters in the credits, what and you animated And I don't think we recorded this? that part either, so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, Tony. Oh, okay. Well, it's easy for me. I was asked to come on and do Puma and Timon, and there's one shot where um, Puma and Timon, they walk past an animator's office, and Olaf is animating or drawing the genie. And I think they, uh, the, at least... It's interesting. I I guess I don't remember the dialogue exactly that Timon has, but he used to say something like, shake a leg. Uh, come on, we got to go, or something like that. So there was a bit of dialogue. He said something him. to Olaf, I think. Yeah, and uh, I know I'll have to see it again. And that was new, 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 new audio. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think that was all brand new. And um, 
I was I was hoping I was going to do Kronk because I did Kronk and yeah. the original and first day groove and of course <laughs> there was one scene that you could previous, really clearly previously see. interviewed yes um, but we did see him in one scene where you're panning down the uh, yeah and he's in the crowd shot at the end but he's like completely still almost so. oh is he in the big shot I looked for him in the big shot at the end I yeah he um, well there's so many characters in that that it, it's hard to make them all out and Nick what'd you do. Um, so the first thing I did they gave me was the the Oswald walking in and bumping into Cusco. Man, there's so much line and, and color and character overlapping. I, I, I lost my animation in there. I couldn't you were even looking see for it. it. Yeah, I was looking for it. And it's like there's so many characters, uh, sort of this sort of moving ooze in the background that it's not a clean silhouette. So it yeah. gets lost in there. So I like so the 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 then the next scene I did was the Hades one, um, where it's like I knew they were gonna do this, and then uh, and then the the Miko uh, running out with um, what are the other characters um, from? Uh, uh, no, the 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 new one. They 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 there's a part where they're trying to get Winnie the Pooh out of the portal. Yes, with something. some of the Encanto characters. Yeah, um, yeah, that's it. Encanto, I mean, that's right. Yeah, and then she or he or I can't remember what character comes out and Miko is right beside them and the other, there's another CG character right beside them. And um, that was probably the hardest of the scenes because it was uh, a la Roger Rabbit where the the, the I had to uh, uh, match the tile and the you know the yeah. running and the feet and the, all that stuff it took me several passes i basically animated the whole thing on ones and, yeah. and twos at the end but i i uh I, I had to go over it several times and try to make it as clean as possible what, yeah. so most of the, <laughs> there's very little left for in betweeners there I, I pretty much animated the whole thing uh straight wow. ahead oh my goodness so, yeah so here's something that uh, a lot of people probably don't know um is that they did call back people like myself and and nick and um you know james baxter i think think and yep. Baxter. Hey, Baxter. Yeah. yeah there was a lot of a different uh, and, will oh. finn yeah um pretty big i think maybe seven or so i want to say different animators that had either retired or moved on away from disney and then they had a, a group of animators in house still too that they they called on like mark hen and randy haycock i just such. realized i had another guest that I was was offering and they said they couldn't do it because they didn't have a tv and then i realized wait I didn't use my TV. <laughs> Oops. Uh, who but that? they didn't work on the short. They just were interested because they worked on Home in the Range and some of those characters were oh, in okay. the they saw. Oh, um, and we previously, um, Shelby and I and Charlie and previously interviewed uh, them. The director of Home on the Range for an April Fool's episode. One of the oh. is John Sanford. The April Fool's joke is that Home on the Range is actually good and does not deserve the flack. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, now the sequels Sanford. is another question. Yes. And they never made a sequel. Yeah, no, we, 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 we um, never got we a whole all... <laughs> sequel. The, 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 kind of swore there was one. John Sanford had ideas for one, but they never made one. But let's face it, most of the the the, the main folk pictures, the main uh, films, yeah, you're not going to find even. Maybe you could say Black Cauldron was like the low point, yeah. but you know, even in there, you can find some good stuff. Yeah. You know, it, it's you're not going to find a, a there's there's a, not a single of the animated uh, canon that I would call lazy for sure. They all yeah, have yeah. so much. You're not, you're not going to find a pebble of the penguin in the Disney. Uh, whole, you know, <laughs> no, no pebble in the penguin. Um, yeah, but one of the things I was going to say is that we um, the directors um, uh, Trent and Dan Trent Corey and Dan Abrams uh, asked all the animators in house or not to animate their scenes on paper pencil and paper so they really wanted to get as much of an old school look as possible yep. so this was not a digitally animated movie even though it's 2d so it, they did it all and and so since nick and i did it at home i don't know i'm sure it was the same for you nick they sent us a ream of 12 filled acme punched paper um because i didn't have any and you know and i still got my animation desk as you could see so i animated Pumbaa right behind me on that desk but 
I'm sure for a lot of people, it was a bit of a chore. Did you, do you still have your desk up, Nick? And you were able to animate? I, I don't, I can't do 2D uh, on paper anymore. I don't have my desk. I sold it um, uh, years ago. Um, oh, so you didn't and, do it on paper. No, no, I don't, I can't do it on paper. I don't but have it's seamless. It was uh, seamless. I could not tell. I, yeah. I did, I did all my stuff on, uh, on uh, Cintiq um, yeah. uh, Harmony. <laughs> And in yeah. fact, I was working on uh, Simpsons at the time. And when they said, I said, okay, I can do it, but I, I can't do it full time. I have to do it part time. So I could, so basically I did, you know, 40 hours on the Simpsons and then I did all weekends on, on this and just worked uh, for about a couple of months there, just seven days a week on this, on animation stuff. Oh, um, man. Um, so yeah, that was, uh, uh, they they paid well so i was happy about that that helped That's me good. a lot but <laughs> but still it was well, they should it was um it was uh I, I talked to the people at simpsons first and asked them if i could do it because i'd have to use i i have the setup i have to do simpsons is owned by fox i uh, okay. they asked me if i wanted to you know download the stuff onto my home computer and it's like I am not destroying my home computer uh, uh, to to um, to for work. So um, they made a deal and they sent me a Cintiq and a and a, and a a Mac and I do all my work on that. And you have uh, to return it. They they actually gave you a computer and a Cintiq. Yeah, and yeah. You kept it. Wow. Yeah. Well, they they shipped it out to Florida when I moved and. Um, and so I have it here and, and they can't update me now uh, because uh, because my Cintiq is too old. So I'm, I'm waiting uh, for the new one so they can send me a new one so they can update my software. And oh, that's Fox. <laughs> yeah. So Disney yeah. didn't send you that. That was Fox. Yeah, but but because Disney and Fox, they're kind yeah. of, you know, you know, together and all that. Yeah. We're sort of like. Um, well, Disney owns Fox. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, one right. owns the other one now. <laughs> right. So so they they <laughs> they said, yeah, you can do this. It's okay if you use the equipment. And Disney, their their left hand and their right hand doesn't know what each other is doing. They they signed me up. <laughs> I was only supposed to go on this thing for like uh uh it was it's a it's you know it's a uh, freelance job right yeah. well they had me sign up with all these passwords and uh you know yeah. go into a portal and uh and uh you know it's like i'm 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 an employee now of the walt disney company and it's like no i i i really am not i you know i don't need to make a hundred uh, uh passwords and stuff for all these portals and all this stuff and they want all my information and they want all this yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. All of us proof of of of, of uh, vaccinations and all this stuff. Oh my god! Oh, yeah, they did security <laughs> checks on us. The whole thing, just to I mean, yeah, to work from mother's home. made a name <laughs> just to work from home on this. They, you know, and they even sent me a laptop in the mail because they wanted yes. me to do all my emails through yeah. their system, their secure uh, email system, and they didn't want anything on my on my own laptops or anything. I ultimately did do some emails and stuff on my own laptop because it was easy, easier. But um, but yeah, I had to like send that back to them and, after I was done. But yeah, they did security checks on all of us. They we all we all became we had to be full time employees. Yeah, here by the Disney yeah. Studio. So Nick's right. It was it was a Herculean effort just to just to get the first scene. Um, yeah. Because I regret if I hadn't known I was a full time employee, I I I should have put in for the uh, the uh, holiday pay during Christmas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah think about that. You were, <laughs> you were talking, uh, Tony, earlier about how you're disappointed they didn't get you back to do more Kronk, and I remember you. We actually talked kind of about that on the podcast about like returning to do Kronk. So yeah, it's sort of, it's disappointing. I know. It, didn't it's do that. funny that we talked about that back then. And then there almost was an opportunity to do that. And I say almost, uh, you know, my brother was asked to work on this too at one point because they used to have a Mushu shot yeah. um, and, and Mushu now only exists in the credits. I don't know if you saw, they had like one drawing of him yeah. with the credits. Yeah. But he's not in the in the film. They cut that shot, so that's why I was the only one out of the two of us that were asked to work on it. I think Tom's pretty jealous, actually. Yeah. 
but he didn't get well, work on it. On that subject, are there any characters that you animated that you wished you could have gone back to animate for this? Oh, I mean, yeah, Kronk, um, for sure. But um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I was thinking that for you, Nick, because I saw I saw a couple. What Ursula? That must Ursula. Have been well, I I believe Ruben animated that shot. Um, yeah, he must have. And uh, um, and I want to do. I was wanting to do a Lumiere. He was in there, although I didn't see him on this pass. When I watched the film, I didn't see Lumiere in there. Yeah. I was looking for him too. I didn't yeah. see him. There was yeah. Cogsworth. He must have been in the same shot with Cogsworth somewhere. Well, I was looking for him. And when I saw yeah. Cogsworth, I looked around and I did not see Lumiere. I had yeah. maybe I had, it was there, but but Will took it out. I had I had trouble <laughs> looking for things because I was just so sort of overwhelmed, but not like in a negative way, but like in a positive way by just everything going on was very, you know, like I had trouble looking for things because everything I was taking so much in at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's it's going to be one of those. Yeah. Things you're going to be, you're going to be happy that starting tomorrow it's on Disney plus. Cause then, then you and can look course, at it over and over again. And of and course go it's going to be on, um, it's going to be playing before wish in the theater. So I'll be looking forward to that. Cause I would Ooh, on love the big to see, screen. see this on the big yeah, screen the and actually see all those characters. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the bigger cool. the screen, the more details you can notice. For yep. sure. Yeah. Still be good to stop frame. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, I'll <laughs> say that by the time it's playing in theaters with Wish, we'll probably know, we we will probably have stopped every single frame to find <laughs> all the Easter eggs so we can really appreciate it in theaters. Yeah. So one of the Easter eggs that I noticed that I hadn't noticed before, because like I said, I saw it once before, but it, you know, it goes by so fast. But um uh this the live action scene in the very intro, it's of course that's Bernie Mattinson talking to another Disney animator as they're walking out the door. But the the two guys that are right in front of them that end up holding the door are, are the two directors, Trent, uh Trent Corey and Dent Jan. Alfred Hebron. Hitchcock style. Yeah, so I, I didn't notice that before, and I thought, oh, okay, they did put themselves in there. That was cool. That's so cute. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice to see Bernie. Yeah. I did have one opportunity. I don't know about you, Nick, probably for you, uh, you were uh, worked on this 100% in, in, at home in Florida, I would imagine, but yeah. I, did, uh, this, I was working on this around the time that ctn animation expo was happening in in burbank and so i remember i went in uh, to show my scene at one point in person and they actually had dailies and the whole thing in the in the theater and i got to meet a lot of the animators the younger animators that were working on it because they yeah. do have a bunch of 2d young animators that were hired and went through an internship and a lot of them worked on it um and just being there with the directors and then seeing everything come up. And I think, I think you were actually, maybe you might even came into that meeting via zoom. I can't remember Nick, but uh, it was still I, cool. I, it was cool to be uh, in the studio for a moment, at least. Yeah, I remember, well, I think you, you posted or Tom, po one of you posted a picture of you at the studio before, before it was announced. So it was, you know, we're working on something, but we can't yeah, tell we you what yet. Say. Yeah, yeah. We can, at the time we couldn't say, but and we were dying to say that it had two D animation in it. You know, I, I, I mean, I assumed it was going to. <laughs> at I the think time. a lot of people did. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Uh, but very cool working on this. I find it interesting that they like they really did go back to the traditional style for this. Uh, is this the last, um, the newest bit of 2D animation since Princess and the Frog, or has there been something between those been that have been shorts. like actual? Yeah, I was gonna say like, like actual hand drawn 2D Eric animation. Goldberg, well, Goldberg, I mean, Goldberg Winnie the Pooh movie. was between, uh, yeah, yeah, Winnie the Pooh was also, mm -hmm. which I'm friends with the director of, yeah, one, yeah, I'm one of the directors of. Steven Anderson. Uh -huh. He's he's helping me. He's consulting on my fan film. <laughs> he's a good oh, guy. cool. Didn't you work on that Winnie the Pooh film, Nick? Yeah, I did about like five scenes of that. A couple of Tigger and a kind of it's been so long. I, I just a, a couple of Tigger scenes, I think. Uh but um yeah, it's it's been so long. It's like over 10 years ago. I can't. Yep. 
they, they I sort of did them and that was it. I was done, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was the end. You of point the them out. If I if I saw the film again, I could point them out. But I, off the top of my head, I can't exactly actually remember. Um, no, I'll have any, which ones yeah. I did on that. But um, but yeah, that was the last. That was the last time um, any two D was done there before they uh, kicked everybody out. And, or they laughed. Uh, yeah, the <laughs> the cynic, the cynical person in me saw like Mickey Mouse come out of the frame, and my first thought was that it was the same technique they used on the Chippendale Rescue Rangers movie, oh, God. the recent one. Yeah, where it the was shell like shaded? just yeah, cell shaded. Yeah, cell shaded. Mm-hmm. Shell shading. <laughs> <laughs> they actually animated every character. I mean, every character was animated the way they were in the style the way they were in the movie in this. Yeah, where yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's a nice touch. And it does make everything feel more like how it was before. Yeah. I will say some of the um like rotoscoping as far as like putting them in the real reality mm-hmm. was a little janky. I saw a little bit of like sliding and such in the backgrounds where people yeah. would like slide when they weren't supposed to as the camera moved but like that's kind of one of the quirks of real animation is that like you know it's not perfect it has little imperfections like that yeah it would be interesting to see uh that uh probably when it's in compositing um maybe some some uh er errors happened you know it, or sometimes it's it's really accurate but when you run it at full speed your eye catches it in a different way and it looks yeah. like it's yeah. lighting. but if you actually slow it down and go oh wait a second it's not but for some reason when i watch it at regular speed it looks like it is reminds it, me of i would slow down animations both I, frequently it was tv animation but i do it for movies too and notice with limp sync often the, either the sound comes before the mouth opens or the mouth opens before the sound comes i don't remember which which i probably should remember which because i do it so <laughs> <laughs> yeah i uh, think the sound comes first and that a lot of tv animation like for like a split like the sound will be there for like a couple frames before the mouth actually opens mm-hmm. and starts wor- wor- moving to the words. Um, hmm. So yeah, there's so many tricks involved in animation that, you yeah. know, it's like, um, what is it? So, something doesn't look good on film. You have to use whatever the other thing is. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cows don't look like cows on TV. You got to use horses instead. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. That was one of the things that I enjoyed, um, actually being able to do lip sync again. Yeah, I've been lip sync in like five years, six, well, longer actually, uh, since I did uh, my last two uh, D scenes. Um, yeah, it's been a long time. They don't allow us to. Actually, that's not true. I they get mad at me when I do lip sync on The Simpsons. So, um, um, but there were a couple of times where I actually did it, and I I I did it, and and they left it in. Uh, even though it wasn't the same mouse shapes as yeah. as it's on their on their model sheets, they, they mm-hmm. I, because it was quirky and it was a performance thing. So, um, so I didn't get to do that. But this was the first one where I actually got to go back in and, and do proper lip sync, and it was it was nice. I I really enjoy doing lip sync. There's something about um, it's not just moving the mouth; it's the the expression of the it's eye, the, the attitude, it's yeah. the head tilts, it's the yeah, you know, all that stuff is goes into yes, a really sure. good lip sync. Yeah. Um, th- so it, that you know transcends just just the movement of the mouth. Yeah. Well, speaking of which, I mean, uh, for you, Nick, this is me just asking geeky questions myself. Um, what was the scene in this film, Once Upon a Studio? What was the character that you enjoyed revisiting the most? Um. I would say well, it's a toss up between um uh, between Hades and Cusco. Um um I really I I really liked doing Hades because it was new dialogue and it was uh, and and they got actually got James Woods back to record it. That to me was like the the the, the biggest thrill. Um the other the, the Cusco was good too. I enjoyed doing that and um um but uh, but yeah, the the Hades was the reason why I, I accepted, uh, you know, 
just he having Cusco numbers. in something where you can actually see that it's him and saying something, even if it's ar- archival, for the first yeah. time in like years. This Cusco, just having Cusco in something and to have yeah. Yeah. this time be animated by you, one of the the supervising animator from the original movie, was really thrilling to see. I I, I that character. Yeah, the only thing they don't have in in that short is is human Cusco. So yeah, uh, but, <laughs> but but you, yeah, you animated uh, if I remember right, Nick, you did the um, the original scene of Cusco saying "No touchy," right? Yep. So so this was the second time you animated. Did you did you? Uh... Well, no. I the first time was with the uh, the human, and this time oh, yeah. that's right. with the uh, llama. That's right, because he was doing the no touchy. He's doing, he's doing the thing with his hands that I can't. Right, so I had to, I had to work out, um, <laughs> I had to work out uh, how to translate those uh, the no touchy ideas from this guy and do it with this guy, <laughs> and he doesn't have any fingers. So do yeah, I, I couldn't do about the, I couldn't do this. Yeah. So I had hands. to. So I had to do that. Yeah. So I had to do these two. <laughs> You know, block yeah, hooks, yeah. you know, hoof yeah. thing, right? So oh, that was kind of weird to actually do the exact same line only with the with the with the uh, um, with the um, animal character. Yeah, uh, that's funny. And of course, I see a lot of people asking, "Why is Cusco a, a llama again?" It's like, well, they all came out of like paintings and books and stuff, so they aren't actually them directly from the story of the movie. They're this frozen <laughs> in this moment. And come to life. Well, if that's the case, then why is the genie? You know, doesn't he? Get, why doesn't he have legs? That's yeah. because Olaf is not a great animator yet. <laughs> fair, fair. <laughs> but and again, he say, did have hands, and that's something. That's a telltale that's sign of your enemy. Why is your hands? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Well, I guess Timon and Pumbaa did interrupt him while he was so he was he was getting to the legs. He was distracted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, the genie can just stand behind someone. No one will notice. Well, and, and Nick, will, uh, Nick will connect with this, but I did feel a little guilty animating Timon. He was not my character in The Lion King. It was Mike Surrey. Uh, but for whatever reason, maybe it was saving money or whatever, they they just asked me to do both. And um, Sounds like know, saving felt, money to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure it was. Um, and I, I felt okay about it only because Timon was so small and on top of Pumbaa's head. It, Pumbaa you know, led the scene. Let's face it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> he's the big shape Literally. that's walking through, right? So, um, and Timon yeah. is is more secondary, even though he has the dialogue. But um, yeah, hey, I didn't see this character in there. <laughs> ah, there's the wa- Waka. The Waka. Right? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's, that's worth some money there because uh, he didn't make it in the film. Uh, he actually is in the film. Yeah, he is. Oh, that's right. Film. He's a candle holder. Yeah, candle holder. That's right. Kronk lights him. That's right. <laughs> well, <I was> <laughs> from Ipanema plays. Yeah, yeah, I think they animated that shot. As a matter of fact, I'm surprised I forgot about that. <laughs> well, it has been a long time, and you a know, long time. Yeah. yeah, we understand, Tony. You know, <laughs> senility. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Well, cool guy. But hey, that's another good thing. I did have all the maquettes there, so when I went to do Hades and Cusco, I at least had the models so I could actually use. That's cool. Oh, that's uh, nice. So I had that given was... those to my daughter. I didn't have, uh, I didn't have my Pumba or Kronk or anything because I, I gave those to my daughters before I moved out here. I didn't want them to get wrecked. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here are the. Uh... Oh, you got a whole showcase. Dang. Yeah. Yep. Wow, there's an Emmy up there. I saw an Emmy. Oh, yeah, (laughs) what is that for? That was for The Simpsons. (laughs) Wow, that's pretty cool, man. Um, that was, was, huh? You have an Annie too? Yeah, I have two of them. They, um, they were uh, the the Emmy was during the uh pandemic, and um, so I went out there and I got ripped off. I didn't get to go into any of the the the, the parties or anything. It just yeah. ushered us out, and then that was it. And um, oh, so, uh, you know, we all wearing masks and and big moment. And yeah, pick it up. Yeah. Just get it. Yeah. Yep. 
Nobody <laughs> touched you. Nobody shook your hand. I'm sure. Well, uh, you know, some people. I mean, I didn't even. Matt Groening was there, but he left before I was. I was able to get it because there was some sort of kerfuffle, kerfuffle, and they they had me in quarantine for the first half of it, and I couldn't get to the table. And they're crazy. It was crazy. But uh, eventually they got me and they threw me on stage and I didn't even know what I was doing. And I went out and made this quick speech and a thank you and all this. And so it was it was a whirlwind, but um, it was uh, still still an honor. Get it back to zero from the uh, cable bill. Uh Oh, cable bill. <laughs> yeah, I had him on recording stream with two Disney animators. Two Disney animators. Yeah, uh -oh. three Disney animators. Uh, <laughs> good seeing you. <laughs> what are they animated? They've animated lots of things. One of them was did Pumbaa as well as uh, one of the Simpson stuff. So yeah. Well, then you should go back to talk to them. Yes, I should. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this might be a good time for me to pop off. Actually, I haven't had dinner Tell yet. To Tron. So uh, I do need to try. Need to go. All right. Um, You're looking a little famished there. there you go. All right. I, do you have yeah. anything you want to plug or anything? <laughs> um, just uh, how much I love Nick Ranieri. And that's my big plug. Is that Nick and I are old friends, and it's so good to see him again. So uh, that's why I jumped on anyway. I've said I'm going to skip my meal, although I decided not to, and I'm going to leave. And eat, but I almost <laughs> skipped a meal for Nick, which is important. That's friendship right there. Yeah, that's friendship. Yeah. I already ate. I made a Hello Fresh, and uh, so I'm good. Oh, Hello Fresh. <laughs> I had. All right, pizza. guys. So so good to see you guys, and uh, thank you for having me on, Micah. Well, it's been a blast uh, catching up. Yeah, we'll do it again sometime. All right, take care, you guys. Hey, hey Tony. Thank you. It's great yeah. to meet you. Let's 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 connect sometime. I'd like that. You you give me a call. You're so busy. You're so busy. I'm not busy. See, what you guys got to do, what you guys got to do is ride a roller coaster dressed up as Kronk and Yzma and retake the um the photo <laughs> from that scene as they're going down to the lair. <laughs> I know who I'm going to be. I'm going to yeah. be Kronk. <laughs> do that at the Halloween party because that's probably the only time they'll let you do that. <laughs> yeah. True. That is true. All right. See you guys. Take care. Bye. Bye now. Take care. It is. It is kind of sad that I, my camera wasn't working because I am wearing, and I should have said this before Tony left. I am wearing a Kronk shirt. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, we felt the energy. We felt the Kronk energy in the room. And I got this. So yeah. Hey, yo! Oh, look at him. Yeah, I love this. is great. This is the one of the best sculptures, uh, uh rough, uh, the uh, stuffed toy toys from that show uh, around. I got, I got even, can't even have two of them because they were so good. You had to buy them at a blockbuster back in the day, yeah. um, uh, because there's so very few, there's so little of um, Emperor's New Groove stuff. Yeah, I mean, they're starting to yeah. pick up. Yeah, but but, uh, but back yeah. then. Yeah, very little. Um, um, actually, I think. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, got, I, I have those. Yeah, got that. Uh, yeah, so a bunch of stuff. But yeah, that stuff. Anyway, um, uh, See, the, the only animation related things I have in my immediate vicinity is I have a couple of models of the Mach 5 from Speed Racer. That's about <laughs> it as far as animation wise. <laughs> I have some stuff, but I can't show it to you. So <laughs> I just got a Della Duck pin. That's all I got with me right now. Oh, that's, my, that, sounds, that sounds awesome. Oh, I got the, oh, the battery's dead on this. Yeah, well. Oh, he's so beautiful. <gasps> Look at the, that Lumiere. Uh, Christmas yeah. ornament. Yeah. I have it's a, supposed a, to light, but the battery's dead. I have a Cusco Christmas ornament that came out this year. Really? Yeah. It's him coming through the doors, so, you know, saying, boom, baby. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't even know they had that. Yeah. And there was another one that was Kitty Yzma inside the extract of Llama Vial. Uh huh. I was yeah. just—I feel like the llama vial itself would be a great Christmas ornament yeah. in general. But they decided they wanted to add a character to it, so they have little kitty Yzma coming out of it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they're definitely 
they've definitely been doing more stuff over the past like decade or so than they were when it first came out. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. When it first came out, they did zip. <laughs> I think that's because the people that grew up with it have uh have some money now. Like yeah. yeah, yeah. Our age of nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also, yeah. it's also one of those um, you know, sort of cult classics, I think. They Oh yeah. That, that uh, I've had so many people tell me that they when they discovered the film, they it's like this is really a good film. I I, I can't believe I I uh, just passed it up. You know, um, I got to sp back in July. I got to sponsor a screening of the Emperor's New Groove at the local theater. They do ret they have various retro series, and they had one series that was free family night, so it was a free screening of the Emperor's New Groove, and I paid two hundred dollars so that my podcast could sponsor it, and I got I a little pass. That. I got a movie Bring pass. Bring it to the so world, much. Micah. Yeah, I got I got a movie pass, so I have a bunch of movies I can go to without having to buy tickets. Um, so that's really neat. Uh, during the during the fifteenth anniversary of uh, Emperor's New Groove, uh, they had a uh, a screening at the El Capitan, mm -hmm. and I went to that. Yep, um, I, I remember watching the panel, the video of the panel from then. <laughs> Yeah, I brought my daughter with me. Uh, she is the one that I based uh, Baby Cusco on, and yep. um, oh. so she's she's like uh, you know she was twenty or something like that, or nineteen or something at the time. And uh, when the when she, we we were walking back to the car, she's like, "I forgot how funny that movie is," you know. <laughs> you know, you get older, it just gets funny. <laughs> yeah, because because yeah, um, my kids they're all into anime and stuff. They don't really watch any of the stuff I worked on. It's, you know, uh, it's just the way it is, you know, that's like, Oh, that's just dad stuff, you know, but uh, so they, they watch the other stuff. But um, so she was a little bit uh, surprised that it was actually. A film. Yeah. Well, I'll say that like, sometimes you'll go back and watch a movie and go, Ooh, that humor didn't age well. Uh, yeah, that's not like, the case. That's not one of those, I've never had that problem with the emperor's no. new group. No, no. <laughs> It's because it's not, it's not, there's, it's not topical, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's all just straightforward jokes. Yeah. yeah. So, there's no, there's, there's stuff that's relevant, but it's not, but it's like timelessly relevant. It's not references to current specific things. Just right. Like, I yeah. mean, you, can, you can say that the Bob's big boy and things oh, yeah. like that. I mean, but again, that'll work as a, just a, a fast food or, or a, a restaurant yeah. dive or something like that. It, it's almost like, it's like the old Warner's cartoons when they yeah, exactly. some sort of reference and people still laugh at it without even knowing what it was a reference to. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, I think it works on that. That's to me that, that, the, that film is, Speaking of Warner Brothers, that's probably it. It's like uh, I'm gonna step out of the the box here for a second. It's like if uh, uh, Galaxy Quest is one of the best Star Trek films ever made, mm -hmm. I think Emperor's New Groove yep. is one of the best Warner Brothers features ever made. Oh, it absolutely <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah, that's, I yeah. totally I, get I, what you're saying. I wrote I wrote on Facebook once. I posted, "It's strange how uh, all the be the best Warner Brothers movies are all by Disney." Who Framed Roger Rabbit and The Emperor's New Groove. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, and Roger Rabbit, well, I mean, there's a situation where, you know, Warner Brothers realized the same thing. And uh, initially, when we were starting on that film, um, they, uh, they, they only allowed, it was like six Warner characters. Wow. Um, um, and then when they saw the dailies, they said, you can have any of the characters you want. <laughs> they just opened the whole thing up because all the other studios, you know, Tom and Jerry and all these other, they were always, they were offering, they were asking like $50,000 for each character that is used yeah. in, the, in the film and all that. And, and, you know, you, they wanted to put a cameo of, you know, Tom and Jerry or something like that, or, you know they're not gonna pay a hundred grand just for a just 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 for a quick cameo 
I yeah. mean, they had to go back in and and uh, change the color of Coco the Clown because they couldn't get the rights. They 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 thought they had it, but then they realized that they didn't, and so they had to go yeah. and undo uh, a now, bunch. Now, of Brer Bear is in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Of course, at the time, it wasn't <laughs> quite as it was not yeah. right. <laughs> but but it is something with Brer Bear in it that is still available on Disney Plus. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair. Song of the South never was on Disney Plus. It yeah. was never available via Disney Plus. Yeah, but I'm saying how some people were saying House of Mouse isn't on there because sometimes Song of the South characters show up. And I was like, but Rare Bears and Roger Rabbit, and that's on Disney Plus. So why can't House of Mouse be on Disney Plus? Hmm. There is a million reasons why that should be on Disney Plus, and all of them are valid. And I don't know why it's not on Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah. I, I gotta, I gotta buy a copy of that. I haven't seen that the Song of the South in in like decades. And I remember when I first saw it, it's like it's okay. The animation portions are excellent. I love those yeah. things. But the live action stuff, uh, it's kind of it kind of dragged for me. Uh, yeah, that's I, that seems to be like. Uh -huh. That did I see it as you know, you know, horribly racist? No, not really. It just but yeah. I see, as somebody who is um, half black, half white, watching that movie, the thing that bugged me the most about any of it, it wasn't any of the like it's the stereotype. It was just how they talked. Yeah, bugged the hell out of it. I could not do all. All the broken English and needless stuttering. Yeah. That well, was what really bugged me way more than any of the other stuff. I think that's one of the biggest uh, problems some people had with it, too. But was, would, yeah. would, would, would it have worked had they spoken the King's English? I mean, wouldn't it look silly or uh, wouldn't it have been like I mean, I mean, I don't think King's English is what they had to do. I just think that, you know, just being regular people. Rather than yeah, a character regular would people, have been regular people in the uh in the the eighteenth you know the yeah in that century era. what would they have spoken like back then that, that's the that's well, the thing I the mean part where, people like, still say axe today so I mean it's yeah. not like well, well the, can I axe you something yeah 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 so, the part yeah. where like the part where everyone else though spoke regularly. And then yeah. all of Uncle Remus's characters and Uncle Remus had this very much I mean, stereotype, yeah, uh, like, yeah, it was specifically those characters, the if, way if they something talked bothers compared you, to everyone bothers else. <laughs> yeah. That was my thing. I was like, Ugh. like, there's plenty of stuff that bothers me and things. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But um, still, I mean, uh, it's it's a shame that those those uh, segments are part of a, a film that is sort of um, yeah blacklisted um, because they're such brilliant uh, pieces of uh, animation. Um, yeah, yeah. I, well, I mean, I think even when it was released, the animation was the high point of it. People were like, "Yeah, the movie yeah, kind of drags." The, the animation's why you see great. It. Well, that's yeah. why they made a whole ride based on it because. Yeah, the ride because is the animation on, portions. It was entirely the animation stuff. Has anybody seen the new ride? It's not open yet. Not, not open yet. yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was just wondering. Um, it's a it's a Princess and the Frog thing, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 I wonder if Charlotte's in it. God, I hope so. I hope she is. She's an icon. Uh, icon. She is, but you know, there is there is no pop of charlotte you know there are a lot of pops that should exist that it makes no sense yes. for them not to exist she yes. is one of them yeah she's one of them i mean my my own personal nerdy obsession uh why is there never daft punk funko pops you know they made like, the same argument for the new ducktales where they literally have square heads and they did not make funko pops for the ducktales characters well, the thing with the Daft Punk ones is that, like, they have every album had a different variant of their costumes, so yeah. you could sell different versions for each of. Like, yeah. it makes it, it writes itself, but yet they never did it. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something about the uh, Princess and the Frog thing. I was in on the meetings for that. Uh, the 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 um, um, merchandising meetings. 
-hmm. And they said to me during the meeting, they said, we are not going to do um, any uh, Charlotte merchandise. And I said, well, why not? Um, and um, they said, they they said, if you put a, a doll out with blonde hair in a pink dress and white, she'll outsell Tiana oh. two to one. Oh. And I just was yeah. like flabbergasted. I was just like, wow. I mean, I and and for me, it wasn't so much. Well, don't put her out in that then. Put her out as a secondary character, but don't take her out completely in the play set. They didn't even have her or Big Daddy in the play set. They had yeah. Lawrence. They had a little thing of PVC of Lawrence, but they didn't have Charlotte in there. And it's just like, <laughs> that's just that's just going overboard. Yeah, don't don't promote her or anything, but don't don't uh, take her out completely. Yeah. Uh, well, I will say yeah. I think Funko Pops are a different demographic. Like that's not aimed at kids specifically. So I feel like having her as a Funko Pop would just complete the set rather than take away from Tiana's sparkle. Yeah. Yeah. That that's what I was thinking. Especially since they're supposed to be like, you know, best friends or something, so yeah. that might be a little bit weird to have them not be together. I hope Charlotte is in the series that they're doing. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. So I know. I think that's being done in, in their new Vancouver mm -hmm. studio. I wonder what that's going to look like. Well, I, I assume it's probably going to look better than a lot of the other spinoffs do, but I don't know. Yeah. Because it's if it, if, it, if it looked like if it looked like the the Tangled series, that would be good. Yeah, I did really like that the Tangled series because they didn't try to replicate the original animation. They well, I, kind of took always, it in its own it's, style. It's always well, yeah, it's, to... it's, a, it's a different um, medium. Yes. So, yeah. It's yeah, it's inspired by me... like Rapunzel's drawing specifically. So it's, it's it's a very different flavor. It's always better to me when uh, the series stylizes the things to look more like TV animation than trying to make feature animation look like TV yeah. animation. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was that was something I always noticed as a kid, even like watching because every now and then, you know, you watch a movie and then they'll make an animated spin-off and you watch the animated spin-off and you're like, well, that doesn't look anything like the movie. What happened? <laughs> the money, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so. so the only instances where that's not the case are like when the show comes first. Even then, though, like Bob's Burgers looked noticeably different on the big screen mm -hmm. than on my well, television. They do that on purpose, though. <laughs> yeah, that's just deliberate. We have to make it look bigger and more cinematic to justify. I think at least that's what they think I, to justify it being a movie. See, I think the only exception to that that I can even think of off the top of my head, where it doesn't like it's the same both places. Was when they made Jonah a Veggie Tales movie. Oh. That's the only. Yeah. <laughs> the Teen Titans go to the movies is basically the exact same animation as the TV series. Yeah. Well, yeah. That one too. Okay. Yeah. Like the Simpsons. It's basically the animation. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Say they, I, when I, when I first started on the Simpsons, I asked them about the movies and I, oh no, we just uh, treated it like three episodes. <laughs> like, well, really? Shouldn't you like up the game a bit on it? Or, you know, but whatever. Yeah, you know. They're gonna they they're gonna make that money like either they way. The game on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As Chuck Jones said it's you know illustrated radio. Yeah, so. yeah. I remember the what is it? Did anybody else? Um, because now I was one of the few cities that's not called Springfield that got one of those promotional tie-in Quickie Mart Seven Eleven rakeovers. Because Seattle got one because it's in the movie briefly, so we got a Quickie Mart. Oh, nice. <laughs> I remember. Wow, that was uh, I went yeah, to, somewhere in a box as a radioactive man comic somewhere in, in Myrtle <laughs> Beach. They have a 40 Simpsons show that lets out into a quickie mart. And I went there uh, recently. Um, so that was neat. Hmm. Well, well, anyway, guys, I think I'm going to have to to uh, uh, take off as well. Um, right. And uh, so. Hey, it was really nice getting together with you guys, and um, I uh, I hope that uh, um, we'll do it again sometime. Um, thanks for inviting me, and um, no problem. Uh, thanks, thanks for coming on such short notice. Hey, no yeah. problem. It was nice to meet you all, uh, even though I 
don't know who iPhone 89 is, but that's uh, probably me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice to meet you wherever you are. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Did you have uh, any plugs for us besides HelloFresh? <laughs> plugs. Well, um, let's see. Uh no, not like I said, I'm I've been I've been sort of out of work for a little while, so I haven't really been doing much of anything. Um except uh, uh, dealing with uh, finances and stuff, personal finances. <laughs> but uh, other than that, uh, yeah, I, I, um, I hope to be back on The Simpsons uh, within the month. And, um, and Watch uh, The Simpsons, everybody. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, hopefully <laughs> and, and you'll be on a treehouse of and, horror. And, like, in nine months or so, also watch The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, and um, the the uh, whatever the Emmy winning the uh, episode whatever what is it oh yeah, yeah. it's a golf one anyway <laughs> um, so so uh, anyway thanks a lot and uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll well I'll see you again sometime all right bye all right. bye all right did you all have anything else you wanted to say. Just thanks for having me again. It was great to be here. Oh, no problem. Thanks for coming. Yeah, it's always cool to like, I, I do like being on people's podcasts. It's fun to do. Just well, what was it know, like? Just... What was it like watching watching a short that animators worked on with the animators? <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> may or may not have bragged to a couple of my Disney fan friends that I was able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I really liked hearing their insight as we were watching it. Yeah, that that's was pretty always, cool. That's why I I just if even if I'm gonna do an interview in the future, I don't want to just do it me and a one on one because it's more fun to have other people to ask questions to. Oh yeah, yeah. And also, you know, just to be like, especially if you're like just to surprise people with like, hey, you want to be on this podcast with this person? Yeah, See, but yeah. that was especially... fun. It was fun having some surprise guests on. Yeah. Yeah, I will say I was not expecting to see those names. I was like, oh, geez. Okay, this is some high profile stuff going on here. Okay. Yeah, well, I've I've known them for a while, you know. <laughs> now, see, I wonder how much would it cost to hire them for a project? A lot. I don't know. More than I have, probably. <laughs> I was going to say, and would they be like under all sorts of contract with other places where they can't animate for other people? Well, I mean, yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's like, if I had the money and wasn't concerned about legal things, I would like, you know, in a heartbeat say, hey, you want to help with this? <laughs> yeah, you'd probably have them be animating for your show, your uh, movie, your fan film. Yeah. Um, or at least, you know, super, you know, providing feedback and stuff and Maybe correcting some things. <laughs> Speaking of, I should probably plug that. Um, I will let you all plug your stuff afterwards, and then anything else will be pre-recorded for me. Um, Perfect. I am making an Emperor's New Groove fan film that is inspired by the TV show, but meant to feel more in line with the movie. So if you haven't seen the TV show, you can just watch this, and you would still get it. Um Steven Anderson is helping consult on the script. He worked on the movie. He also directed uh, Meet the Robinsons and co-directed Winnie the Pooh, 2011. Um, Shelby's going to be doing a voice in it. And Jacob yeah. will be doing the music for it. So yep, check that out whenever the heck it comes out. Because I don't know. Because animation takes time. <laughs> All right. Who else has stuff to plug? I don't Let's, have anything uh, specific coming out right now, but I'm on just about every possible platform as uh, Shelby Sessler, except YouTube, where I'm Shelby Nevio. Uh, I don't think I don't know if I have anything new coming out soon, but hopefully, maybe. Jacob. Well, you can find my work all under the name of. You can find the music that I do. I've been writing original electronic music for just over a decade now. You can find all of that on uh, Spotify, Apple Music, Bandcamp is my lead platform under the name of Close to the Sun, as well as recently on my YouTube channel, RCT3 is Epic, 
I've started reviewing rides much in the vein of Tony Goldmark's older videos. And I just did a big two part Halloween special reviewing every version of the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. It and in fact, nice. there is an Emperor's New Groove reference in there. There's okay. an Emperor's New Groove reference in part two. Well, but that's great. those are all available on my YouTube channel under RCT3 is Epic. I would love it if you would go watch them because I need views and the algorithm doesn't want to lump me in with other content like it. All right. Uh, thank you all for coming on. Heck yeah, anytime. All right. I think I need to go to bed or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Get some good rest. All right. Bye. Bye. See y'all.